Hi, I'm Peter Kinnett with Daily Extra, and I'm here with Matthew Warchus, the director of Pride. Welcome. Thank you. And congratulations on the film. It's been so well received here in Toronto. Thank you very much. It has been remarkably well received. Extraordinary audiences. Yeah, I was at the, the premiere screening at the, at the Elgin Theatre, yeah. and you know, people were just cheering and crying and laughing, and it was just, you know, I I'd imagine as a filmmaker, sort of the dream in terms of um, watching that response. Yeah, it is totally. The, do you know, it's, it's happened quite quickly, this film, in terms of there hasn't been a delay for its release uh, from when I completed editing. The day after I finished editing the film, it went to the Cannes Film Festival and it got a huge standing ovation. And, uh, and then I finished some mixing and worked on it a little bit more and very quickly then we're here and we had the premiere in, uh, in London last week. Uh, Paris after that, now we're here. So I feel like I've come out of a tunnel of work and met these audience reactions where audience after audience stands up and cheers for the film. They find something, and quite diverse audiences is worth saying. People who wouldn't necessarily think they had obvious connections with the material, mm -hmm. uh, different age groups and different nationalities. And that is a dream, yeah. I mean, maybe we'll, just, we'll start by going to the beginning. Like, how did this film um, get started, and how, do, how were you approached, or, or how did you approach it? I was sent the script, uh, simply, and uh, it was the best script that I'd ever been sent. Um, and then I found out that it was true story. Um, but it was a very it's a very refreshing piece <coughs> of writing. It's uh, funny without being without straining to be funny. Uh, it's not precious. It's not an agenda film. It's not preachy. And yet it is serious and covers a lot of serious things, so it's pretty rare. Yeah, and I mean, you know, this film is set 30 years ago um, in 1984, um, but it remains very relevant today. And, you know, watching it with that audience and seeing all these people of, as you said, a very diverse um, audience s celebrating what's being said in the film, I mean, that's a very new opening that, that, that this film can be welcomed by everybody because of, you know, things have changed in 30 years. It is marvelous that we're now in a time when people would risk. A mainstream budget on this subject because they reckon that an audience <coughs> is ready for it. And it's turning out to be true, it would seem. It's early days of the film, but it would seem that it is probably true that it is now a time when something like this can play in a multiplex and people uh, from all backgrounds will love it. Well, that's the best feeling in the world. What I was told about lesbians can't be true, can they? You're all vegetarians. <laughs> And one thing that really amazed me at the film too is that you know there's basically 20 <laughs> primary <laughs> characters, and it's rare that a film works so well fleshing out so many different characters right. and and dealing with all these different people's stories. That's what's unusual about it. Yeah, it is in fact a romantic comedy in that two unlikely uh, entities uh, who you would think would argue and fight a lot and do um, somehow come together and entwine, and it's got that romantic comedy structure which makes for a very uplifting ending. And instead of it being about individuals, it's about groups. And so it was really important to keep that number of people and just find a way of making that work. A gaggle of gays and lesbians has come out in favor of the minor strike. We've been backed up by perverts. We've been through some of the same things you've been through. Look, we raised this money because we want to help you. And that's it. Um, people look at the film now and they say it's such a sort of uplifting and inspiring thing and, and they look at it and they say well you know what f what can we do now um, are we doing enough and it's kind of motivating in, a, in, in an abstract way there's a sense that people say you know ah, let's see, things are different now and, I, and I've often said now we are our connections are mostly digital um, social media and um, the internet means that we can uh, click to, or to sign up for something instead of going to meet somebody. Mm -hmm. Or uh, uh, the Ice Bucket Challenge just requires individuals with a camera phone. And um, it's, it's, there's fewer and fewer opportunities, it's almost certainly true, to meet people in a group, to show up and stand together shoulder to shoulder for something. Yeah. But let's not forget, this group of people, this bunch of amateurs, LGSM at the time, had this crazy idea they couldn't get other, many people to be involved. It's, it was as rare and unusual and as crazy an idea then as it would be now. And that's kind of inspiring. Um, it's about grassroots, about somebody just having a, a notional idea to cross the street and, and support somebody. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks very much.
Thank you.